Exciting developments are unfolding. SpaceX has just announced a significant adjustment aimed at reducing the booster engine's landing burn duration on its upcoming flights. But what's the reasoning behind this change? At the same time, preparations for the next mission are ramping up with prototype production and testing moving full speed ahead. Meanwhile, NASA has revealed new updates regarding private crewed missions to the International Space Station. Let's dive into all the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX's choice to select B-14 for Flight 9 marks a pivotal moment in the evolution of the Starship program. A true turning point that signals the beginning of a new era of reusability. Until now, the focus has primarily been on validating the basic flight capabilities of Starship and Super Heavy, but with B-14, SpaceX is clearly shifting gears toward refining its recovery techniques and testing the limits of its landing systems. Previously, it was announced that B-14 would forgo a Mechazilla-assisted landing and instead splash down in the ocean. That change alone indicated a more cautious, data-focused approach. However, in a surprise update, SpaceX revealed an even more intriguing modification to the flight plan. According to internal sources, B-14 will intentionally shut down one of its three inner engines during the landing phase, relying on only two engines for the final burn. To understand the significance of this, it's worth reviewing how the Super Heavy landing typically works. During descent, all 13 of the center and inner ring engines initially ignite to slow the vehicle. Once the velocity is controlled, the outer engines shut off, leaving the three inner engines equipped with gimbal capabilities to handle the final descent. These three engines are critical for both deceleration and precise navigation to the landing target. But on this flight, SpaceX will deliberately simulate an engine-out scenario by disabling one of those three engines. Why? Because this is a critical test of the system's resilience and adaptability. If successful, the data gathered could validate a backup landing configuration, one that would allow SpaceX to proceed with landings even in the event of an engine failure rather than aborting and diverting to a splashdown. This kind of contingency planning is essential, especially as SpaceX looks to make Mechazilla-assisted landings a routine part of Starship recovery. In such scenarios, any mid-flight engine failure could jeopardize not just the mission but also the infrastructure on the ground. Proving that a two-engine landing is both possible and safe could give SpaceX the confidence to continue with recovery attempts even under suboptimal conditions. This test appears to be motivated in part by the recent issues seen during flights 7 and 8. In flight 8, one of the Super Heavy's engines failed to reignite entirely. Thankfully, it was located in the outer ring. But if a similar failure were to occur in one of the three central landing engines, the outcome could be much worse. Testing the scenario now, in a controlled environment over the ocean, is a smart move. It's also worth noting that B-14's upcoming flight could be its final act as a test article. After contributing valuable data from landing attempts, B-14 is now being used to push the limits of what the system can do. Meanwhile, S-35, the ship assigned to pair with B-14, is also playing a key role. As ship has fewer engines than Super Heavy, each one carries more weight in ensuring mission success. Any failure here would have an even larger impact, making thorough testing and reliability improvements a top priority. S-35, like B-14, has experienced delays due to engine issues, and those concerns are now front and center. SpaceX has already acknowledged that problems with the ignition system were at least partially to blame in previous flights. In response, updates and improvements have been made to the igniter hardware. These refinements are currently being verified in both B-14 and S-35. Preparations for Flight 9 are now in full swing. B-14 recently completed a successful static fire test and is undergoing further inspections in Mega Bay 1 with a particular focus on the engine section. Observers also noted that grid fins on the booster were being adjusted during transport, another critical component in controlling the booster's descent. These refinements indicate that SpaceX is taking no chances. S-35 is also advancing. It's currently receiving its engines and will soon be transported to Massey for additional tests. With both the booster and ship being prepped for flight, all eyes are on how SpaceX will execute this critical test campaign. What makes this so exciting is that it's not just a technical validation, it's a bold demonstration of SpaceX's approach to rapid iteration and redundancy. By testing a potential failure scenario deliberately, they're showing just how confident and ambitious they are about Starship's future. 
and this test may only be the beginning. If it goes well, it opens the door to more robust landing protocols and help pave the way for Mechazilla-assisted recoveries with reduced risk. It also increases trust in Starship's ability to carry out high-stakes missions, whether it's satellite deployment, lunar cargo delivery, or eventually crewed flights to Mars. So what do you think of SpaceX's testing plan with B-14? If you're excited to see how this all plays out, drop a let's do it in the comment section down below. The countdown is on, and Flight 9 is shaping up to be one of the most important missions yet in Starship's journey. Preparations for SpaceX's upcoming Starship missions are showing no signs of slowing down. While all eyes are on Flight 9 and the critical testing it will carry out with Booster 14 and Ship 35, the groundwork for subsequent flights is already in motion, indicating just how aggressive SpaceX's development cadence is becoming. One of the most surprising developments has been the recent movement of Booster 17. Initially, it was assumed that the scheduled road closure on the 8th of April would be for Ship 35. However, SpaceX had other plans. On the morning of the 7th, the booster transport stand was spotted moving from the launch site to the production site. By that afternoon, it had rolled into Mega Bay 1 where it was quickly paired with B-17. The very next day, on the 8th, right on schedule, B-17 was transported to Massey's test facility. What made this event even more noteworthy was the speed with which testing began. On the same afternoon that B-17 arrived at Massey, a cryogenic test was carried out. The vehicle's tanks were loaded with liquid nitrogen to simulate fuel loading and check the structural integrity of the booster under cryogenic conditions. From all indications, the test proceeded smoothly, and this likely won't be the only test B-17 undergoes. Following the pattern set by B-16 and S-35, B-17 could be subjected to multiple rounds of cryogenic and pressurization tests to validate design integrity, identify potential failure points, and ensure it is fully flight-ready before engine installation begins. Once testing concludes, B-17 will return to Mega Bay 1 to receive its Raptor engines, where it'll enter the final phases of flight preparation. The rapid pace of B-17's development highlights SpaceX's broader strategy. The proximity of this test campaign to the recent testing of B-16 and S-35 signals that SpaceX is preparing to dramatically increase its launch frequency, potentially initiating a period of rapid fire flights if Flight 9 proves successful. But B-17 is only part of the story. Its mission partner, Ship 37, is also moving swiftly through the assembly process. The aft section of the vehicle, A-3-4, which houses the critical aft flaps, was recently seen being delivered to Mega Bay 2, indicating that stacking operations are nearly complete. Once finished, S-37 and B-17 are expected to fly together on Flight 11, a mission rumored to involve the first full-scale attempt to catch a super heavy booster using the Megazilla arms. Given the complexity of that operation, it's no surprise that SpaceX is pushing forward with such urgency. Preparing these vehicles well in advance allows extra time for troubleshooting, modification, and integration testing, ensuring that everything is in peak condition when the time comes for the capture attempt. Meanwhile, yet another prototype is quietly entering the pipeline. A unique test tank aft section was recently moved into Mega Bay 1. This assembly features a ring structure topped by a fuel system, and it's believed to be part of Booster 18, potentially the first prototype. Of the long-awaited Booster version, Version 2. If confirmed, this would represent a significant evolution in Starship's design, likely including weight reductions, structural enhancements, and other optimizations meant to improve reusability and performance. All of this points to a significant ramp up in prototype readiness just behind Flight 9. Should that mission meet its goals, it could unlock a new era for SpaceX's Starship program, one defined by rapid launch cadence, increased testing complexity, and major advancements in orbital reusability. So, are you ready for what's coming next? Because if SpaceX pulls off Flight 9 as planned, the pace is about to accelerate like never before. Next, let's explore NASA's latest developments regarding private crewed missions to the International Space Station, a significant move in the agency's long-term vision to commercialize low-Earth orbit. On April 2nd, NASA officially released a solicitation for two additional private astronaut missions, or PAMs, which would mark the fifth and sixth such missions to the ISS. 
These missions represent a vital step in NASA's overarching plan to transition away from the government-led ISS and toward a future sustained by commercial space stations and operations. In its announcement, NASA reaffirmed its requirements for crew selection, particularly for mission commanders. To ensure flight readiness and operational safety, the agency requires that a commander must either be a current or former NASA astronaut with recent ISS experience, specifically someone who has participated in ISS operations within in the past five years. Alternatively, individuals may qualify through current active involvement in similar high-level spaceflight operations or by completing equivalent training recognized by NASA. Another key criterion is that the commander must have previously served as a long-duration ISS crew member, having spent at least 30 days aboard the station. One notable update in this solicitation is the expansion of eligibility for mission command roles to non-NASA astronauts. For the first time, individuals from partner space agencies in Canada, Europe, or Japan may be eligible to command a PAM mission, provided they meet the same experience and qualification thresholds. This opens the door for commercial astronauts with space flight heritage to take on leading roles in these missions. High-profile candidates include ESA astronaut Tim Peake and JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, both of whom are now affiliated with Axiom Space. To date, Axiom Space has been the been the sole provider of private astronaut missions to the ISS, having conducted or scheduled four PAMs under NASA's current framework. While Axiom remains a strong contender for these next missions, especially given its experience and its future commercial station plans, the landscape is becoming more competitive. Companies like Vast, which are making rapid progress with station hardware and partnerships, are now entering the field as serious challengers. Though NASA has not yet confirmed specific launch windows, it is expected that these 5th and 6th PAMs will take place sometime between 2026 and 2027. What remains constant, however, is the spacecraft of choice. SpaceX's Crew Dragon remains the most reliable and flexible crew vehicle currently in operation, making it the likely transport solution for these missions regardless of the winning provider. As commercial space access continues to expand, NASA's push to support private astronaut flights is setting the stage for a vibrant and competitive LEO economy. The upcoming PAM selections will not only shape who gets to fly next, but also who will lead in the future of orbital human spaceflight. So, stay tuned. Big decisions are just over the horizon. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.